Hello everyone, and welcome to another Fire Carry Guide. Today we're doing our final installment of the Japanese series, where we're looking at the Hakuryu. So if you haven't seen it yet, we do have a playlist showcasing the uh, recent changes to the American carriers from the Langley all the way up to the Midway. And uh, today, uh, we've also already done, uh, if you see the playlist, a whole show all the way up to the Taiho, and we're going to finish now on the Hakuryu. So like all previous videos, we're going to talk about the modules, the upgrades, the exteriors, the Captain Guild, Captain Guilds, Captain Skills. So without further ado, let's go into our game. So here's our lovely Hakuryu, tier 10 Japanese carrier. In recent times, it is uh, beset by difficulties in that it no longer has like full air control. Um, all midways now come with two fighters that are quite strong. They're more powerful than the Hakuryus. And another thing to note when these two carriers go against each other is that the Hakuryu only has a plane capacity of 100 planes, whereas the midway has a plane capacity of about 130, I believe. I'll just have a quick double check. 136. Well, that's even better. There you go. Which means that um, not only are your planes uh, weaker, and you need to be careful in how you uh, use them, uh, you also have fewer of them. Uh, now, that is made up for your strike capability. However, the Midway also has these double torpedo bombers, but they're tier 8. All the bombers of the Hakuryu are tier 10. Now, that being said, let's get into the details of this ship. So, first things first, when you get to this carrier, you are going to want to probably upgrade the fighters to tier 10. You're just going to need to have the fighters at tier 10 first. Uh, it allows you to compete uh, with air control against other Hakuryus and Midways, that type of stuff. Whether or not you take the consumables, damage control party 2 or defensive fire 2 at tier 10, it's debatable. I mean, the damage control party lasts 30 seconds. Um, the, that's the, the immunity from in fresh fires and floods. It's pretty good. Although if you find yourself being attacked or under pressure, then maybe uh, you want to uh, get the premium version. It's just a little bit of extra credits at this point. The second defensive fire consumable, it's very unlikely that someone's actually gonna try Kara snipe you. Having two charges is nice. The self-defense of the Hakuryu is absolutely massive, especially the long, uh, high caliber, long range guns. They're the best uh, thing about the Hakuryu self-defense. But as we say, we wanna go fighters first. Um, after that, we wanna to go torpedo bombers. And then you've got a choice. You can go dive bombers or you can go with the ship module. Uh, the first ship module is a straight upgrade from the stock. Stock is 232, which is the upgraded title module. Um, 233 means we get an extra dive bomber. So do you want to make your dive bombers faster and tankier by making them tier 10 first? Or do you want to go for the module that gives you an extra dive bomber? You know, three tier 9s. That's up to you. But I would go fighters, torpedo bombers, and then a choice between the, uh, the, the flight control mod and then the dive bombers. Uh, there is an alternate mod, which is 422. It may be very tempting to take 422 if there's lots of midway players out there with fighters and you're having difficulty, but that reduces your strike capability by a large margin. That third torpedo bomber wave is a huge damage reduction uh, because it's, 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 it's a third of your damage, basically, that you're taking away from your main damage source, your, uh, your torpedo bombers. Your dive bombers are not primarily your main damage source. They are for scouting and they are for fire starting, but the damage comes from the torpedo bombers and the ability to cross drop fast targets having that third extra wave is very very handy now that does mean you don't have those extra two fire waves what do those two extra fire waves mean if you do go 422 well you have to micro four fire waves and then four bombing waves so you can't do both at the same time and even microwaving four fire waves against for example a midway player who's only got two fire waves but he'll be doing a lot of strafing and you have to make sure there's a lot going on and the ui is somewhat limited i think in the moment so it's very difficult to control four waves quickly you know making all the correct adjustments and entry points uh, on commands um i do believe 422 is viable if tier 10 uh ranked slash clan battle slash competitive becomes a thing uh in that instance then yes the extra fighters would be a thing because bombing doesn't happen at tier 10 such as bombing doesn't happen at tier 8 in competitive games since the sort of AA focus is far too high. Anyway, let's move on to upgrades. Before you even think about taking the Hakuryu out, you're gonna to wanna to get the fighter upgrades. So step one is increasing the DPS of our guns. And that's all aircraft guns, but primarily we want it for the fighters. We also want the third upgrade here, which is air groups modification two, that increases the fighter health and increases the ammunition. More ammunition means more strafes, more you know time in the air without having to come back and land. And the health, of course, means we can be inside NAA, we can launch around, we can suffer strafes and click on engagements better. So it's, it's a no-brainer. There's nothing else here that you'd want. You definitely don't want to take the servicing time because what you want is tankiness. The Japanese uh, carriers already load planes very quickly as it is. 
Uh, after you've got the fighter upgrade things, then you can go back and you can get, for example, uh, well, depending on how much money you have, the, th the next one I would definitely recommend is Air Groups Modification 3. This increases the health of your attack aircraft, torpedo bombers, dive bombers. Now this means that rather than, for example, taking speed, the benefits of taking health is that, yes, you can get in and you can attack, and you're less likely to lose a plane, but if you want to scout, which is what usually the, the Japanese dive bombers are for, um, then having higher health in the dive bomber is more important than speed. Since when you drop the payload on the dive bomber, you can escape uh, enemy fighters chasing after you anyway. So you don't need that extra unit of speed. Once that's done, then you can start filling in the blanks. So for example, reducing the chance to be put on fire and flooding is useful. Once damage control system modification one, um, you don't really need anything else. Don't be tempted to take defensive fire modification one, so that increases the 20% of your defensive fire activation time, even though the carrier lasts two minutes. You don't want to make it um, two minutes 20 or 40 or whatever, because realistically, when you're being attacked with defensive fire, you're going to turn that stuff off as soon as the bombing wave is done, so that you can get the cooldown. You turn your AA off with the P button and turn it back on again, so that your cooldown be quick as possible. You don't want it to last really long, so there's this long activation time, and then there's another cooldown time. Uh, and then he comes back and bombs you while you're on cooldown. So that that's not actually that helpful. The only reason where I would maybe see defensive fire modification one being maybe useful is in a ranked scenario on a tier eight when you have your defensive fire up and the enemy carrier is trying to probe and attack and you're defending um, your fleet on some sort of YOLO desperate push. What happened to me a few days ago? But th that's so exceptionally unlikely that. Yeah, you don't want to take that. You, you want to take damage control system one. You just want to reduce the chance that someone can put you on fire and flood, especially when you're being shot at by some destroyer. Uh, we also want to take damage control uh, system modification two. This reduces the time that we are on fire and flooding. Now, if you're on flooding, you're probably going to repair that or damage control part of that. But um, fires is nice because sometimes you can, you can let single fires burn out rather than using your damage control party. And then lastly, we take uh, concealment. Uh, this is really just to get our concealment down to a more comfortable uh, detection range with our captain skills. Speaking of contacting skills, if we hop over here to my Hakuryu, Captain. Come on, you out. Catch up with me. Catch up. There we go. So, uh, the Hakuryu's um, very similar to my Taiho Captain, if you've watched the Taiho video with slight difference. We still take the basic 11 point skills. We take aircraft servicing expert. This increases the uh, health of our planes by 5%. That's a no brainer. The servicing, uh, the servicing um, of the aircraft is a nice perk and bonus, but we don't really care too much about that. We just want more plane health. The second uh, two point ability, we're gonna take torpedo acceleration. We have three torpedo bombers. We are in the tier 10 bracket. There are a lot of fast ships like Kabarovsks. The technique that I use is in coming from behind and approaching from the side of the torpedo bombers. And then the third wave is a spare, depending on how that person maneuvers. The torpedo acceleration allows us to hit not just you know bad players, but like the best players. You're, you're thinking about who is the best player in the world in a destroyer. Can I kill him? And torpedo acceleration makes that a lot easier. Alternatively, if you only have one torpedo bomber wave that doesn't happen at tier 10, you might not take torpedo acceleration. You might take adrenaline rush as a more reactive skill. So if you take damage, you can load things quicker. But it's kind of like a the less worst skill. Like if you're not, if you don't want the benefits of torpedo acceleration, then in terms of what else is there to pick, it's it's pretty much adrenaline rush. You wouldn't take expert rear gunner because uh, at this tier, people don't click on your planes to kill them; they will strafe them. So expert rear gunner is only realistically useful maybe if you have a captain staying at tier four or five. For the three point skill. I'm taking uh, torpedo armor and expertise. Our main output is our torpedo bombers in forms of damage, and we want that servicing time of our torpedo bombers by 20%. That's very helpful for us to turn around as quickly as possible. Alternatives could be the basic fire training. However, the AA of the Hakuryu is already incredibly high. The long range guns are already monstrous at 200, 250. Uh, depending if you take an AA signal, it can be a little bit more. If you take basic fire training, you can push that up to close to like 300 or something. But do you really need that much damage with a defensive fire and your fires? And the answer is, hey, it's cool to min max and have insane AA, but if you don't actually need it, then what gets the better benefit here? And the, the skills are better spent on taking torpedo armor and expertise. You would never take, in my opinion, emergency takeoff because if you're on fire, something has gone wrong. And then when you are on fire and you want your planes to load as quickly as possible so that you can then hit the damage control party then to take them off, emergency takeoff actually doubles the servicing time of your planes. So something that might take 20 seconds now takes 40 seconds, and by that time you're dead. So that's that's terrible. Don't take that, especially with the damage control party consumable and now lasting an immunity of 30 seconds. Why would you want emergency takeoff? It's just a terrible skill. Don't go down that way. 
the high explosive chance of dive bombers are so high as well that there's no point taking expert uh, demolition expert either or anything like that because it's already insanely high uh, chance of fire on the dive bombers. I don't know the exact number, but it's like you pretty much if you hit the ship, you get it on fire. Uh, for the first four point skill, we take air supremacy. This gives us an extra fighter, an extra dive bomber per wave, and since we ha that means we get five extra planes taking off because we've got two fighters and three dive bombers. It's very, very helpful. And primarily, we only really want the skill to buff up the fighters. The buffing up, for me, the fighters, so the most health, most ammunition, most planes, is important to get air control. It allows you to protect your team, it allows you to scout the enemy team, it allows you to deny bombing. It's just everything comes from air control, and that's why we want to buff up our fighters as much as we can, which is why we take air supremacy first. So that's 10 point captain. 11 point captain, I would highly recommend taking dogfighting expert, even though you're at tier 10 now. Um, the fact is we want the extra ammunition. The extra ammunition means uh, being able to strafe three times and then having a little bit left over so we can click on a plane or panic or something. Having just that little extra ammunition is really, really important. Um, and I don't see that there's a better skill to take at this point for you know, 11 point captain. And the fact is you may not be using a new captain at the Haku. You may be moving a captain up through the tiers. And if you've got this, then you should already have dogfighting expert from our previous you know, tiers when you're playing. That takes us to 11 points. To get from 11 to a 19 point captain, there's a number of variations. I personally will take Concealment Expert next. This reduces my detection uh, down to a comfortable 11.5 kilometers. The Hakuryu is quite fast at 34.5 knots. It's got an armored flight deck, so it can take you know, pretty much some damage if it's nose on or tail on when it's running away because of the way the shell is landing on the flight deck rather than on the hull. So Concealment Expert allows me to get a little bit closer if I want to, and then I can, you know, plane flight times or less between we get a target. And then the final uh, skill, now this is a, a choice. I personally, on the Hakuryu, it has double the number of long range uh, a, a caliber guns than the Taiho has. So in that respect, I like to bump that damage up with manual fire control for a armament. Now this will double the long range caliber guns, um, which is huge. This is like a massive amount of health. So anything comes within five kilometers, I'll wreck that. Now my mid-range Bofor guns, which are still 242 at 3.5, they could be pushed up to 4.2 if we took AFT, but personally I'd rather have um, the choices, do you want uh, at 4.2 kilometers, do you want something around 500 damage or do you want uh, you know, 500 damage at 5 kilometers? And, and, and swings and roundabouts. You could argue that with the defensive fire triggering off the mid-range AA guns, it'd be better to have it 4.2. But I, I like the, the manual fire. I think that's like a big wall up and it kills planes off. On the tie hole, because it doesn't have as many uh, uh, high range guns, there's only got 125 instead of 250 because it's obviously only half the guns, I take AFT instead and that helps push the uh, Bofor guns out a little bit more. It's just a personal flavor for the ship, that's all. Right, that being said, um, in terms of exteriors, my captain is a 19 point captain, so I'm just using a free experience uh, camouflage that we got recently in the winter event. Under signals, I like to take the flooding signal because I want to get flooding chance on torpedo bombers. I like the flooding and fire signal because I've got so many dive bombers and torpedo bombers, I want to increase the chance that I can get fire flooding because often on very large targets, for example, like a Curve First or even you know Yamato, Montana, you're not going to kill them in one go. You're not going to kill them in one alpha strike, right? Unless you get like some sort of detonation or something. If they're at 100% health, you'll absolutely cripple them, but you won't kill them. So the best thing you can do is hit them in multiple stages. Some torpedo bomber, some dive bomber, get them in a fire flood, and then wait till they damage control party, and then do it all over again with spare waves, you know, fire and flooding, if that's possible. It's not, it's not always possible due to fighters and AA and defensive fires, but that is the way that you bleed down the really big kind of targets. And having that chance to cause these fire and floodings is very, very helpful. If you're going like kind of combat setup and you're doing something serious, you'd probably take the speed signal and you'd take the AA signal and that would be your four signals for the carrier. Me personally, I'm just getting extra captain experience to go with camouflage, so I'm using some economic and special signals. Under flags, take your pick. Uh, currently rank season's going on, so I'm using the 20% servicing cost and Jolly Roger 4. Right, let's go see if we can find another carrier in a random battle. And we'll put everything that we've uh, put to work into a game. And of course that means finding a guy. So, there we go. So we're looking, in terms of what targets we can go for, the Hukuryu is very good at going after destroyers. It is also very good at going against battleships. And anything that doesn't have a defensive fire. At tier 10, lots of things have defensive fires and they have multipliers. So that by themselves, they don't have a huge amount of AA, but when they pop the panic effect, we're more concerned about the panic effect and us 
our inability to do damage than we are about the, the loss of planes and whatnot, because we'll, we'll be careful about that. But in this game, we have an enemy midway, so we know he's going to have slight air control. We have plenty of battleships to pick from. That's great. Some of them are tier 8, even easier. The Des Moines, the Donskoy, uh, I need to be careful of. Specifically just the Des Moines. Edinburgh we don't care about, it's in the defense fire. And even if that Edinburgh was a Minotaur, we wouldn't care about too much either, because if we want to kill the Minotaur, we can send everything in one big massive attack and probably kill them. But it's, it involves not being harassed by enemy fighters. And the destroyers, there's nothing fancy here. There's no defensive fires as far as I can tell here. So we could probably go after them if they were exposed. Uh, probably fighters first and we'll probably do fighters first Peter bombers we'll wait till one of the capture points starts kind of flicking or is contested we'll see where our destroyers go okay, can I give them a little bit of support and then uh, the easiest way to give our team a temporary advantage at the beginning is to pick off one of the enemy stars. If you pick off a destroyer at the beginning, it's not always guaranteed, then that means um, you know that guy can't then harass your team for the rest of the time. He can't provide smokes, he can't do torping lines, you know, he can't grab capture points. You, going after the DDs or, or basically going after the ship that kind of contests the cap points is, is pretty big. And that's also true for if you're playing rank battles as well. Hmm. In terms of AA, the Montana's going to have higher, so we don't really want to go near him. But the Yamato and the Bismarcks and the Amagi, they're, they're fair game and very easy. The Amagi has um, better bulge protection, but at, at, when you've got three waves, uh, I don't think it really matters. Right. So, one other thing is the. Midway has stronger fighter planes, so we, we can't just fly in there and contest them. That's not going to work in our favor. And even if he doesn't get the best trades, unless <laughs> unless we actually... You want to try to say is he has more reserves. And if, because he's got more reserves, we have to be very careful that we try and help our destroy her just game, kind of. I don't actually want to fight the fighter right away. I want to fight in friendly AA, but actually really want is... So there's, there's an enemy DD in B because he has contested. I want to have one of these friendly cruisers move up. So he just tried to strafe me. He actually clipped me. Uh, that's not going to work. Oh, he's actually still going with me though. Alright, fine. No? Is he leaving? We'll double team him. So he's running away, so hopefully I can grab him from behind. Yep. So he's... he's he, that's fine. But this is the problem where I'm going to lose... Wave. So I'm going to pull back, uh, try and leave, and go that way. So I'm going to exit strafe, strafe on top, kill one plane, kill a few more. Let's strafe these exit strafes himself. Even with some good play, that hurts. <laughs> right. Another way of going about this is we can... Provided, no, he'll probably still have him. Yeah, so we're beating him down. That's good. We can't stop enemy bombers, though. That's one of the things. So it, when you have a fight like that, it probably favors him because... Uh, oh, I didn't want to get caught by his strafe into my torpedo bombers because two and a good strafe can still kill a bunch of planes. Shimakazi. Bingo. That's what we're after. See that even with one plane wave, he's able to never stop when you're a destroyer in smoke. Stopping in smoke is the worst thing you can do because I know exactly where you are. Boom, dead. I see this in rank all the time. If you're a destroyer and you barely play with carriers, the last thing you want to do is oh, I need to slow down and I need to hide. I know where you are, I know where you're in the smoke, I can lay a pattern, you're, you're sacrificing your maneuverability, which is the only thing that's going to save you. You need to go full speed and maybe turn into the torpedo bombers or something, even if it risks you to other ships. Right, now we're going to spot with our dive bombers. Uh, we can't intercept his bombers, there's nothing we can realistically do, but then they're AP, so they're not that great. So here's enemy destroyer, I'm going to harass him. Boom. 
And I'll keep this guy out here to scout. And I'll keep the dive bombers back for the moment because I don't really have a need or a purpose for them. As soon as everything lands, I'll take off the group of fighters. I'm going to use this dive bombers to scout just to look for uh, incoming uh, torpedoes. Uh, Shimikaze, but he's, he uses, he's pan Asian, which means a deep water. But I'll spot see if he tries to escape or run out and give our Shimikaze some eyes. And the reason I'm waypointing up like this is so that the um, dive bomber doesn't loiter and fly around in a circle and enter the area of these lower ships. If I have him going back and forth like this, then um, he'll stay just outside of the AA range. Another thing I recently realized is if you press the highlight the plane and hit the Z button to go into the camera mode, you can see now the AA range of your of your planes from the ships and I can tell that I'm too close because the Des Moines has about 7.2 kilometer AA so I'm going to back him off over here because he's moving up and he's killing that so now if I go check them out see he's, out, he's back he's no longer in 7.2 kilometers he's 7.9 but he is still getting a bit closer right fires are incoming so we're just going to leave them in the wild goose chase and go elsewhere our fires are up we're not looking to engage the enemy fighters in the duel we're not looking to gain air control, we're just sort of looking to either defend our team or prevent bombers when we get a chance. Uh, and he's actually taking the base, he's chasing the dive bombers away from our team, away from the combat area. Because our planes are faster because we've dropped our bomb load. And if he wants to chase them, that's great. And if he keeps chasing them, and he has a single fire by itself, we could go after that fighter with our two fighters and beat it. But we don't want to do that because there's no need. And see he's given up so I'm going to move the dive bomber back. Grip up the torpedo bombers. See, there's a big block of AA here. The mine's right there. That's not great. The Yamato and the Ember is kind of isolated, but the, the two um, fighters are in the way from us realistically intercepting that. So if he, if he leaves, we might be able to poke our way through and go for the Edinburgh. Or what we might be able to do, depending on the Des Moines here. No, there's a fresh smoke. And I was going to say what we could have done is gone after the... Uh, destroyer that was there, but the Des Moines I feel is too close and the fighters are in the way as well. So we're going to lop over in this direction and maybe go after the Amateur or the Edinburgh as we've seen the last scene on the minimap. So we're going to try and spot over here. I can't win that fight without AA support, so I'm not even going to bother. And we can see already some of the planes are being kind of clipped in the first place. I think he's going to go for a strafe. Yep, he is. Alright, so we got our plane for free. And here's the Amato, that's what we're after. So this dive bomber is trying to spot uh, incoming torps. Oh, it's the health of the Amato. Pretty high. So I'm gonna just send uh, the dive bombers only with one torpedo bomber group. And then I'm actually going to choose to sacrifice here. Well, not sacrifice, but aggressively engage. So we'll drop that. Let's go with the fires. So what we want is to get some flooding and some fires. So we've got flooding, and we'll get a fire here. So we're going to beat this fire group. Now we're going to pull our torpedo bombers back, our spare ones, sorry, bring our fresh ones up. And I'm going to actually start moving up just in case they get wounded. Make sure he doesn't mess up with that guy there. Dodge that, clip that, boom, right now. This Yamato has damage control parties. If we can get to him quickly enough, because he's basically, every second now that he's used that damage control party, and we can tell that because we're not getting any damage numbers. <clears throat> His, his the cooldown on his abilities is coming up. So what we want is to get there and just alpha strike is fine, damage is fine, but what we want is flooding. We want to get flooding. So even if there's like a panic effect, which there is, we're just trying to get some torps in. Three groups probably too far back. The four groups fine because there's the Don Donskoy's defensive fire. So I'm going to pull these planes back outside the AA and then have them uh, go back away from other AA. So we get a flooding. Not a huge amount of hits, but it's flooding. That's going to last probably at least another 20 seconds, maybe. So, you know, it's it's bleeding damage. If we had attacked him with all the planes that we had at our disposal, we probably wouldn't get the same amount of damage. And uh, actually bring this two group back to land with the one group. Uh, the eight group, we're just going to have a look around. 
uh, we're still within the, the mines AA kind of, so we're just watching the B. And our gearing's doing a really good job of locking out the B cap. So that's fine. And we're just looking for torps. See, we're still ticking damage. Uh, I mean, he could that could last a long time uh, on the Yamato, depending on how long his damage control party is until it comes back up. In fact, it's kind of awkward. I would like to try and intercept the um, torpedo bombers, but I can't. So you can play slightly differently what I'm doing. I'm playing a little bit greedy because I'm focusing on my damage and my kills and the team is probably maybe suffering if the enemy at midway is getting kills because um, I realistically should be trying to engage these torpedo bombers. The difficulty is that I can't, that's not he's, he's actually kill off his speed and then turn or, or commit to taking one or turn left and then dodge. There you go, that's actually a pretty good job. Although he is spotted by planes and that's bad. And so what I'm saying is uh, I'm going for damage. I'm, I'm, I'm eliminating his fighters so he can't mess with me, and then I'm doing damage uh, to the enemy team. Now, the Amethyl survives, but he's well, pretty beat up. Uh, he, oh, he turned back into them? Uh, dude, what are you doing? I mean, I understand there's a whole bunch of things shooting at you, but... Well, this isn't great, because... Um, wow, that deep war torpedo destroyer is doing a lot of good work. We're limited by the... Conf what is your Mr. Kurfurst up here doing? Who knows? I feel like I'm playing ranked right now. What can we do in this scenario? Well, the AA ships are still going to be a problem. And that, that is a uh, crux of tier 10. It is very When the team is clumped up, it's very difficult, even for a tier 10, even if you're a midway, to have a big impact. You know, They're all in one area. So the, the cumulative passive AA is huge. I mean, we could kill off the Bismarck, the Amato, the Donsko if you didn't have his defensive fire, fine. But when they're all on top of each other, oh, hello fire there. When they're all on top of each other, it's very difficult. Then we can maybe try to go for the trash can on C, right? But that means we now need to deal with um, this fighter groups. And we're going to have to outplay him here. No, that's a mistake. Because I've just missed him. And if he just dodges, he, he has it a lot easier. If he's smart, he will not allow me to strafe him. He's not smart, he's allowed me to strafe him. Oh, I, I couldn't exit straight there. I'm not even sure why I didn't strafe my own plane. What? Does anyone explain this to me? Okay. Hmm. Can't see the destroyer. His fighters are engaged. We'll kill off the Bismarck. Try and just use two waves, because we, we, we can't... Normally, one would go for the kill secure, uh, and like use all your forces available, but at the moment... Uh, I want to... Oh, wow, we lost the plane. I want to try and hit the Yamato if possible. If this doesn't kill him, we'll go for the guarantee. Yeah, so we need to use it for the guarantee. And he dies to gunshot. But still, we need the guarantee that he would die. So we'll try and get our planes back, turn them around. Now the team's kind of enemy team's spreading out. We'll see if we can make anything uh, happen here in terms of what we go for. Uh, lost the fighter duel. Down to my last bunch of fighters. Even even with good fighter play, he's kind of crippling. I don't know what Kerfurst was doing. He was way off by himself in a carrier game. <sighs> I'm limited what I can do with the fires. And the thing is, if I babysit him, I never attack. Maybe it's a playstyle thing on how one would go about it, but I'll just see if I can't spot the dive bombers here. The thing is, he's got so much health that it's, it's almost pointless to bother attacking the trash can with the dive bombers. Uh, Montana's sitting in the back. Well, I'll tell you what. We could maybe try and trigger a long-term fire on one of them. So if we put him over there, and put him over there, put him over there, over there. Let's go full speed up here. Um, right. Let's uh, see if we can't get a fire. Uh, put that there. So we got a fire. He probably won't put it out, but we, you know we're basically looking to uh, damage him. Go there and there. 
see our concealment experts now working in our favor. Barely. Right, got two Peter Bombers. I guess we can go for the trash can. We simply can't go for the Demon and the Donskoy. We will not kill anything in that scenario, so we, we, we'll go for what we can. I mean, we could kill off the Montana, but that's not going to win us the game. And you could do a desperate attack on these ships, but again, you're not going to kill them when they're grouped up like that. So, if you're ever wondering how to uh, <laughs> survive a carrier attack, stay together. And I lost the game. Oh well. Could we have done things differently? Yeah. We could have uh, tried to uh, focus purely on scouting, with the dive bombs being everywhere, but we're kind of watching the bomb. Uh, we could have tried to um, intercept bombers, but the problem is we have to we have to muscle these fighters first and then bomb, and we were looking to bomb ourselves. So, I mean, yeah, we got 150k damage, but that's really irrelevant if you've got a loss. What did you do meaningfully? Well, we kind of uh, harassed the destroyer that was in smoke, so that was our kill. Uh, so we made it easier to get the cap, and we helped our guy on the... Uh, top middle cap uh, we were spotting for a while on the southern cap until the Des Moines pushed up and stayed with his team which is the right thing and you know we did we, we were looking for an attack now because of the big clump of ships in the south and the Des Moines being in the place that it was and we were kind of locked out we figured we go around we saw an opening on the Yamato we tried to bleed him now the 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 second wave the first wave attack was fine the second wave attack was probably too late um, if we had you know, timed it perfectly. Like the, the Japanese damage control part is like uh, between 10 and 15 seconds, right? So if, if you time it so that the first bomb goes off and you watch the damage numbers, the damage numbers stop, then the, the second wave should already be moving in because by the time the torpedoes actually connect with them, 10 seconds will have expired and you get the maximum amount potential, you know, flood time. Uh, if we had our spare dive bomber, uh, rather than sending two dive bombers, we could have sent just one dive bomber and then we could have an extra fire on top of the flooding we might have been able to have killed him off. But that's just one ship. Uh, in, in this whole battle, in this particular scenario, uh, the, our team was fighting their team and we sort of collapsed. Uh, the, you know, the enemy CV, he only really got a kill on that one destroyer who was kind of flaking and moving around. The, his uh, Midway's um, dive bombers, AP ones, are not particularly good at 9 and 10 ships other than the cruisers. And they should be fine. So can we blame our team? Uh, maybe a little bit, but can we blame ourselves? Yeah, we could have played differently. We could have played more team support, but if you're playing more team support, then we're not necessarily going to get strikes in ourselves to kind of help the team out. So swings around a bit. So you need to, you need to practice, you need to play, give it a go. But uh, anyway, I hope um, you learned something from this video, even though it wasn't a victory. You can't always guarantee a win. Uh, we got more plane kills than Midway, even though we were uh, down on uh, fighters. We used them to our best of abilities we could. Uh, there was no real friendly cruisers, but we, you know, we tried to outplay them. Um, yeah, we, we helped some cap, we got a kill. Some games, you know, you just can't do anything for it. That's why a lot of people sometimes play Division of Tier 10, but I don't really you know, feel the, the need to do so. Uh, so, that concludes uh, the Hakuryu sort of video. If you want to know more, or you want to ask questions, or if you have curiosities about, hey, how do I do this, or how do I have that kind of air control, then by all means you can watch my video, which is still uh, up to date more or less. And there are minor things that are slightly out of date now with the patches, but for the most part, the, the plane control and all that type of stuff and the approaches and the angles and the fire mechanics, they're all the same. Um, if you want perhaps me to re-review -re uh, premium ships, I can do that. Now I already have um, a review for all the premium ships, and we're obviously waiting for the final version of the uh, graph settling now, but if you would like me to do that, give us a request. Uh, but until something fresh or new comes around, or there's a burning desire by the public to uh, see uh, content on another carrier, we'll leave it at that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye!